Hello everybody, my name is Will Nathans and I'm a painter artist here in Dublin, Ireland and welcome to another art video uh, sponsored to Kennedy Art Shop here in Dublin, Ireland. So today what I'm going to do is a portrait demonstration from my imagination and I'm using oil paint and my palette is made up of titanium white, cadmium yellow, uh, Venetian red and ivory black. And with this palette, it's a very simple palette, but you can use any uh, combination of yellow, red, or black. Um, it's a very, um, it's a great way to produce flesh tones with just white, yellow, red, and black. Okay, so to begin, I'm working on a gesso board. And for a medium, I just have a little bit of linseed oil. So I'm just gonna sketch out for you in pencil on this gesso board. Um, position of the head. So I'm just starting with an egg shape. You can see that. And then I'm running a line down the middle. And that's going to give me the gaze at which my portrait is going to be looking, the direction they're facing. And just by putting a line across like that, that's going to indicate the, the brow ridge. Now halfway the brow ridge to the chin is roughly the nose. And then from the nose to the chin, half of that is roughly the mouth. And I'm also trying to keep everything parallel. Now in between the brow ridge and the nose is roughly the ear. So I'm just gonna position the ear there, roughly. And remember your neck stems from behind the ear. And I'm also going to indicate the temple ridge. The temple ridge is what gives your head the, that corner. It'll help give the head more of a dimensional feel by just indicating the temple bone there. And I've got now a side plane, a shaded side, and the front illuminated side. So the light will come from the top right here. Okay, and that's roughly what I'm going to... keep it that if this is the brow my ocular cavity is going to be somewhere in here the eye hole eye holes are going to be in there roughly and just being conscious of certain rules so the the nostrils are generally within the the tear ducts and then the corners of the mouth are generally within the the middle of the eye there crown head also Stemming from this point of the temporal ridge, if you just kind of did a, a semicircle, that would roughly indicate the uh, the hairline. So you have the hairline and the the crown of, of the head. Okay, so with that, I'm going to put my pencil down and I'm going to start initially just laying in um, the shadow tone. So a little bit of linseed oil. So I'm going to start with red. Bit of yellow, and just a touch of black, and I'm going for kind of an umber sort of tone. And you can alter your umber tone more brown, more reddish, or more yellow, depending on how much more uh, red or yellow you're adding. Okay. I'm just going to lighten it a little bit with white, just to raise the value a bit. Okay, I'm going to use this tone just initially to cover in all of my sh my shaded area. So if this is a form. The light is coming from this direction. I've got shadow on this side, and I've got a, a cast shadow produced going moving in this direction. So I've got the two types of shadow. I've got my form shadow, which is more or less soft, and I have a cast shadow, which is more distinct, 
so I'm applying that principle to my to my head. So I'm just going to start to lay in, feeling at everything as I see it, and imagine. just as if I were painting a form. So you can imagine this is the hollow of the eyes and they meet at the center there at the glabella. And the great thing about this technique is that um, just by using a little, little oil, linseed oil, you can pull out, if you need to, some of the paint and redraw where you, uh, where you need to. It's just shaping the eye. I'm leaving the upper eyelid illuminated. Now the nose would be casting a shadow, so I'm going to indicate that. Keeping in mind, making sure that the central medium, the median line there is running through the, the glabella and right through the philtrum, those two lines underneath the nose, the structure of the, of the upper lip there. Corners of the mouth. Now the corners of the mouth, the upper lip, would be in shadow. So I'm just going to make that distinct. Whereas the lower lip is facing the light. And that would be a cast shadow underneath the lower lip. This is the shade. around the chin and a cast shadow created by the head onto the neck. And what I might do is just create a bit of a background using the same tone and use this background to shape the, the light. On this, on the side of his head. So I'm, I'm just after the silhouette, the silhouette is just the shadow pattern created by the features. And if you just focus on the, on the silhouette, you'll get a strong sense of the character of the person just by working the silhouette. Okay, once that's done, I'm gonna move on now to a generic tone to lay in for all of the all of the lights so I'm gonna mix now a bit of white a bit of red a bit of yellow and then just the smallest amount of black and this is just a starting off tone flesh tone and you can subtly alter it depending on how much yellow or red or black you place into it. Okay, that's good. Bit more pink. And I'm gonna use this tone to lay in for all of my lights. Okay, I'm gonna bring it right to the edge too. And as I'm doing this, I can reshape the features, just coming in close to the shadow. And just work the tone in and around. So 
out the temple, then the head starts to turn back. And then it's back in there. Crown of the head. Don't worry if the this general tone that you're putting in is getting a little muddy or it's picking up some paint or even it's even in some cases graying from the pencil, but don't worry, you know, this is just the first lay-in of the paint to help build the structure of your of your portrait. Um, same can be said for an area of, um, you know, the side of the nose here. I, I, I know I've seen sometimes portraits where the, the side of the nose that's in light is pa been painted too strong. Uh, it's too dark. You're best off just completely grouping the, the cheek with the, the edge of the nose there as one solid mass at first. Lips here. So every part that's in light is getting the same, the same tone. Okay, now, before progressing further, what I want to do is just, if it's a form shadow, I'm just going to soften the edge a little bit with a, a bit of dry brush. And right away, you're going to see a sense of form, a rounded form. If you need to, you can dip back into your shadow tone and just pull it out a bit. This palette is very harmonious, so um, it'll prevent your painting from getting too muddy if you just stick with these four colors. Okay, particularly around the brow, it gets very soft with the form shadow edge. I'm just going to soften that there. And right away, you'll just see the form start to turn. Okay, with that in place now, I'm going to start with my lights. So I'm just going to take a bit of white, a bit of touch of red and a touch of yellow. This is probably my most colorful tone. And I'm going to start to lay these in, in the areas facing the light more directly. So for instance, um, the nasal bone, you know, right here at the bridge of the nose, just to get that nose to pop out a bit more. And then a little highlight on the tip of the nose here, just to make the nose come forward. Also around the nostril here, there'd be a great deal of light. That plane there facing the, the light around the nostril and on the other side. See, and sometimes in just painting the light plane, the projection of, say, a nose will just come forward. Um, the tear duct is usually an area of a great deal of light. And the cheek, the top of the cheekbone. 
we have to remember too is that from um, the hairline or the brow ridge rather to the nose all of this this upper portion of the head the northern hemisphere so to speak the the brow to the nose is all facing the light and as soon as you get from the, the tip of the nose to the chin just like a ball the head is turning away from the light so you have to be careful that these lights that I'm putting on the brow and so on are not the same light that's down in here. And when you're doing this, just to soften that light into generic tone that I laid in earlier. Sometimes a bigger brush is better. Just to soften it into this. Okay. Just going to soften this edge here. And also sharpen where it's a cast shadow a bit more. And soften where it's a form shadow. So I'm just going to darken that highlight a little bit and use that for the highlights down on this lower lower hemisphere of the of the mouth. The top of the lip there. Where the lower lip here the bottom edge of the upper lip rather meets the top edge of the lower lip. That's quite sharp, so I can bring a bit of sharpness down in there. Having said that, when you practice doing this, you'll get a real handle on the head and um, how to develop the form on the head. And with practice, you're, you're committing a lot of these sort of uh, the, the topography of the head, of the features, you're committing it all to memory so that the next time you're in front of the model, you can, you'll have a better understanding of what it is that you're trying to paint. And um, hopefully you'll, you'll get more success that way. Just one little nice flourish you could add is just the top of the ear there. You can add a bit of light. So you're painting the light right into the wet shadow. Your lobe might be an area of light. There we are. And then I can certainly just darken the background and that'll give an added effect to the head, to the luminosity of the head. So I'm just going to bring this dark right into Sometimes you get a nice, a cleaner passage of paint when you when you paint wet into wet. It's um, 
the stroke just has a bit more, uh, in some cases it can have a bit more character and nuance because you're really noodling the edge with wet paint. And you can see how a lot of that light looks much brighter just against the contrast of this um, darker background. So in some cases, you don't have to keep adding more light paint. You just have to darken what's around it. If you practice this, you did maybe, you know, one a week or one a day or even, or how, how often you can, you'd get a great understanding of the head, just practicing these heads, using portraits from the newspaper, um, and then just paint them. With a simple palette like this, you'll in time get a great understanding of how to portray the head in oil paint. So I hope that was helpful everybody and um, thanks very much for your your time and be safe everybody. Thanks very much. Bye bye.